and welcome to this whiteboard walkthrough. Um, my name is Stephanie Yun. I am one of the creators of Apache Flink and CTO at Weberica. And I'd like to tell you about Stateful Functions today. Stateful Functions is the newest addition to the Apache Flink project. It's been recently added and it's a, it's a new API for, for different use cases that we, that we want to enable with Apache Flink. So what is, what is this about? What use cases do we have in mind when we uh, introduce Stateful Functions? And how does it differ from, you know, from traditional stream processing? When should you use Stateful Functions? When would you use Flink's existing APIs like Data Stream API and Table API? So in order to illustrate this, let's look quickly at, at some of the core properties of you know, more traditional stream processing programs. Um, and this is true for Flink's um, data stream API, but also for pretty much every other uh, stream processing system out there today. So one core property of, of stream processing is that your application is defined as a direct data cyclic graph of operators. This is also often called uh, the, the stream processing topology. And when you define a stream processing application, it, it consists of two parts. It consists of the individual operators that take events and transform them. They might join them, they might aggregate them. And it consists of the, of the topology, basically the wiring together of these operators. So basically defining, defining that when this operator sends an event, to which operators will it flow next? So this, this wiring, this topology has to uh, take the shape of a directed acyclic graph, meaning it cannot, you know, arbitrarily loop the events in a cycle, and and that is that is very much by design. It it is a core property that that enables things like efficient efficient scheduling. It enables things like um, tracking event time progress with watermarks efficiently, and so on. Now, while while this is a good match for a lot of applications, there are also some applications that, that don't fit this, this way of you know, describing the application logic uh, very well. Um, there are applications where exactly this predefined topology becomes a problem, or the acyclic nature of this topology becomes a problem. This would be applications where the individual operator kind of needs a more, a more dynamic you know, approach to deciding where to send the data and, and being able to send it you know, to different tasks of the same operator kind or even send it to, to other operators such that the events in the end follow you know, a cyclic communication pattern. Let's look at an example here. Let's say we have an event that, um, that, starts, that starts an operator and let's, let's take an example of, um, let's take an example of of building feature vectors for, um, for, for building a, you know, a classifier system for, let's say, fraud detection. So we have events that come in. We want to enrich the events with a lot of, um, a lot of properties in order to, to build a feature vector and in the end um, you know, pass it through a classifier that, that tells us, well, is this event most likely um, a valid transaction or is it a fraudulent transaction? So when an event comes in here, the first thing that this operator would do is it would it would ask certain other um, operators to um, to to send their latest um, their la latest information about let's say that particular customer the particular geography the you know particular um, target account that the that the transaction goes to and so on so we would have let's say different operators that um, that this operator here asks for um, enrichment information. That would that would send it back and allow this operator to basically build a more yeah a more complete view of what is all the context that was going around um, this transaction. The next thing might be sending it off to another um, to another operator that actually runs the classifier. And now that we've actually made um, made a classification, made a decision here, we might as well decide to you know feedback that information. Into some of the into some of the other operators in order to say um, in order to give them feedback in order to you know refine the statistics further. So this kind of this kind of interaction or event event driven application um, 
is something that if you look how to, to model it to this kind of directed acyclic graph, it's not, it's not quite straightforward. You can, you can jump through some hoops to make parts of it work, but in the end you're going to hit a limit both um, imposed by the more like rigid, um, rigid predefined interaction between operators and the uh, acyclic communication pattern that this enforces. So this is exactly what stateful function allows you to do. It allows you to build these functions. You can think of them as some, something like stream processing operators that can communicate in a dynamic way arbitrarily with each other. You don't have to predefine the topology. You don't have to adhere to um, this acyclic flow of information. But what you basically have, you have a system that implements completely dynamic messaging. So this is actually something that that is maybe a little more low level, you could, you could say, but it's also a lot more flexible than, than classical stream processing. It may sound familiar to, to actor programming and actor systems. And, and in fact, this, you know, this dynamic message sending, this arbitrary interaction pattern is, is in fact what, what actor systems also give you. So what is the, what is the distinguishing thing here about stateful functions? And, and that is really very much in the, in the stateful part, right? If we take back a step again, um, one of the things that you know, classical stream processing or you know, stateful stream processing as embodied by Apache Flink brought to the table is really this, this statefulness of the, of the operators, this ability of every operator to keep pretty much arbitrary state locally consistently and to have this integrated with messaging to give you exactly one's consistency for all updates to the state. Now that is, that is a very, very strong property that makes the development of a lot of applications much easier. And stateful functions brings exactly that property to this space of you know, dynamic messaging between different functions. So in the same way as stateful stream processing has the statefulness of operators, stateful functions has the same statefulness in every function. Every function can keep local state that is, that is persistent and that is integrated with the with the messaging between the functions to give you the um, to give you the effect of exactly one's state updates and of guaranteed reliable messaging. And this as a property really simplifies a lot of work greatly. You don't have to deal with um, with uh, considering message losses, retries, um, timeouts in your application. You don't have to talk to external durable data stores. And, and deal with the, um, with the semantics of, um, of state updates, update failures, um, integrating update failures with revoking messages and so on. It's, it basically gives you in the same way as stateful stream processing an out of the box exactly one's state and messaging abstraction. So maybe a few last words on how does that actually fit into, into the area of stream processing in Apache Flink because Apache Flink has been actually built initially as a system it's very much tailored to executing these topologies. And in order to allow it to, um, to run these kind of applications efficiently, we, we employed a little trick. And that is, we actually define underneath the hood a stream processing topology that basically acts as a dynamic interpreter of, of the messaging here. It's a very simple topology with a feedback loop. Um, one of the new features we added um, to Flink as part of the stateful function um, integration um, and this feedback loop basically allows Flink to say when, whenever, functions, um, whenever functions try to uh, send messages to each other, they're basically, each operator feeds them back to themselves and maybe in, while, while doing the feedback, um, routes them to a different shard in the same way as you know, a message with a key by is routed to different shards. So with this simple trick, we actually built basically a data stream program with a feedback loop that acts as an interpreter for pretty much arbitrary dynamic messaging applications while giving you the same goodies that the data stream API gave you, for example, a consistent state, reliable messaging, and so on. That is it. Thank you for watching. I hope this gave you a bit of an idea of um, yeah, what we're doing in the Stateful Function project and why we built it, and see you in the next part of the series.